Okay, let's stay on the roll. Now we're going to do Proverbs 14. So if you, if I just did a book, a small book of the Bible. It was Joel. Uh, actually found something very interesting in there that alludes to pre-tribulation rapture. Go check that video out. Um, guys, make sure that you're checking the playlists. I have small books of the Bible, books, you know, with one to four chapters. I have Proverbs, doing all the, all the chapters in Proverbs and doing, um, morning prayer playlist. And I have a revelation playlist. Um, each one has a little bit of commentary, not a whole bunch, not going into a great big bunch of detail. Mainly they're just read throughs because there's little things that jump out of these that we need to cover. And a lot of, for the most part, we've gotten away from reading these things. Now, I always go back to Revelation chapter 1, verse 3, where it says, Blessed is he who reads, blessed is he who hears. But um, even though that seems like it only applies to the book of Revelations, I apply that to the whole Bible. I think we should constantly be reading and delving into every part of it. Like Hebrews 6. A lot of people have been talking about Hebrews 6. Well, Hebrews 6 links to Numbers 14. Go read Numbers 14, then go read Hebrews 6. It actually helps explain some of the things that are going on in there. It gives you a better insight as to what's going on. But in this video, we're going to read Proverbs 14. Let's see what kind of wisdom we can pull out of this. The wise woman builds her house, but the foolish pulls it down with her hands. He who walks in his uprightness fears the Lord, but he who is perverse in his ways despises him. Well, let's go back to first one, verse 1 for a second. So... There we go. Um, the wise woman builds her house, but the foolish pulls it down with her hands. Is this completely meaning that a woman is actually physically going to tear her house down? No. This is meaning something that when you are married and have children and you have a home, you build the home up. You teach the children. You help the husband. Um, it, same goes for the husband. Same goes for the kids. Everybody has a part to play in this. But the foolish woman will cause dissension in the house mess around, cause problems, not take care of the kids, and literally will tear the house down. That's what this is referring to. Uh, it's more on an emotional or on a personal level rather than just generic, I'm going to pull it down with my hands. He who walks in his uprightness fears the Lord, but he who is perverse in his ways despises him. This is talking about pride. Because a lot of people say, oh, you're self-righteous because you won't uh, go party and drink and all that kind of stuff. No, I'm not. I, the Lord doesn't want me to do those things. I'm not going to do that. I want to make him happy. And people will look at that as self-righteousness, but it's uprightness. I fear God. I don't want him mad at me. But people twist it and make it to be something that justifies them. In the mouth of a fool is a rod of pride. Pride is a killer, guys. But the lips of the wise will preserve them. Where no oxen are, the trough is clean. But much increase comes by the strength of of an ox. Need to read this one and contemplate this one. There's a lot in here. I'm not going to expound on it because I want people to do their own research. But read this one and think about what it means. Where no oxen are, the trough is clean. But much increase comes by the strength of an ox. You can even do a Bible search on that. It'll help you with some of those keywords. A faithful witness does not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. A scoffer seeks wisdom and does not find it, but knowledge is easy for him who, to him who understands. And we deal with this with people involving the, the pre-trib rapture. I constantly share people a commentary, giving scripture in detail, and 100 scriptures about the pre-trib rapture. Nothing. Will not even begin to look at it. And here it talks about that very same thing in verse 6. Go from the presence of a foolish man... When do you not perceive in him the lips of knowledge? So when you realize somebody isn't who they say they are, isn't speaking properly, isn't, um, you know, is trying to, call, to get away from them. Turn around and get away, because they could lead you into their very same sin. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. The wisdom of the prudent is to look inward. Am I walking right with the Lord? Am I on the right path? Examine yourself. It's okay to do that. A lot of people think, oh, don't look inward. Now you're being self-righteous. No, look at yourself. I, I covered this earlier. Examine what you're doing. That way you know you're in, the right, you're in the right place. That way you know you're saved. I covered a bunch of scripture this morning about that. 
Fools mock at sin, but among the upright there is favor. That's absolutely true. They think it's cool. They laugh at it. Christians do it and don't realize they're causing their own destruction. The heart knows its own bitterness and a stranger does not share its joy. <clears throat> the house of the wicked will be overthrown, but the tent of the upright will flourish. So isn't a house tougher than a tent? But look at what it's talking about. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. We have a ton of people in the church that are doing that right now. They think they're good. They think they're doing the right thing. But it's all destruction. Even in laughter, the heart may sorrow, and the end of mirth may be grief. And I know right now people that are watching this can completely relate to that. You can laugh and still be sad. And I do that every day. But, but, but listen, don't let people deceive you into thinking you have to have joy because you're in the Lord. God has a very soft place in his heart for those who mourn, for those who struggle, for those who have sadness, for those who are wounded and have a broken spirit. Very, very soft spot in his heart for them. The backslider in heart will be filled with his own ways, but a good man will be satisfied from above. That means the simple things are important and satisfying. The simple believes every word, but the prudent considers well his steps. Test all things. Test all spirits. A wise man fears and departs from evil, but a fool rages and is self-confident. Looking, looking at his self for his own salvation. A quick-tempered man acts foolishly, and a man of wicked intentions is hated. That's the truth. I have a lifetime of experience in that. The simple inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. And people may not think, they may not look favorably upon you, but when they need something, they're quick to call. The evil will bow before the good, and the wicked at the gates of the righteous. The poor man is hated even by his own neighbor, but the rich has many friends. That's the truth. He who despises his neighbor sins, but he who has mercy on the poor, happy is he. That's a good work. Do they not go astray who devise evil? But mercy and truth belong to those who devise good. In all labor there is profit, but idle chatter leads only to poverty. And that's not just poverty here, it's poverty up there too. The crown of the wise is their riches, but the foolish of fools is folly. The foolishness of fools is folly. What riches for the wise? The riches up there. A true witness delivers souls, but a deceitful witness speaks lies. We have a bunch of those people in the church today. In the fear of the Lord there is a strong confidence, and his children will have a place of refuge. I've told you guys before, and I'm going to use myself as an example. I've told you guys before, if the word says this, I'm not going to be moved from this. And there are, there are people after people trying to get me to, excuse me, trying to get me to change the gospel or change the scriptures in order to suit their ideas and their sensibilities. Now, I can't do that. I cannot change the, what the word says. That is irresponsible. And that is my confidence. I will not be moved in that. Because I know what the Lord does to people who, do, do, who does those things. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. To turn one away from the snares of death. What are the snares of death? Sins. In a multitude of people is a king's honor. But in the lack of people there is uh, the downfall of a prince. He who is slow to wrath has great understanding. Actually, you know what? Verse 28. I just had a revelation about that. Because Satan is referred to as a prince. In a multitude of people is a king's honor, but in the lack of people is the downfall of a prince. I think a lot of people in the end are going to leave Satan and go to the Lord. That's what that's saying to me. He who is slow to wrath has great understanding, but he who is impulsive exalts folly. A sound heart of, is life to the body, but envy is rottenness to the bones. Envy is a, another killer. He who oppresses the poor reproaches his maker, but he who honors him has mercy on the needy. 
So a lot of people look down on the poor. They do what they can to hold the poor down. And they don't realize that by doing that, you're actually going directly against God. You're going against Christ. You gave me a drink of water when I was thirsty. You visited me in prison. Remember that those scriptures that Jesus was saying? The wicked is banished in his wickedness, but the righteous has a refuge in his death. That's right. The wicked, they know where they're going to flames. The righteous, we're going to the Lord. Wisdom rests in the heart of him who has understanding. But what is in the heart of fools is made known. That's the truth. Righteous, everybody shows their true colors eventually. Righteousness exalts a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. The king's favor is toward a wise servant. But his wrath is against him who causes shame. So much knowledge in here. And you know what? We'll read through it. A couple of things will jump out at me. I'll come back in a month, read the same one, and new things will jump out. It's all about life experience. It's all about as you learn, new things are made known to you. This word is living and active, and you're constantly learning from it. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.